So uh, I guess I, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a... Uh, I want to go over a little bit of the homework, okay? That, and just like to, to, to show you guys what I'm looking for. So I was thinking I might do like just part A of number one. Just so you can see, right? here's here's how I would approach this problem. And since a lot of the problems are pretty similar, um, going through that will hopefully help you out a little bit, okay? So, um, <clears throat> and also it'll give me a chance to review a little bit of the solo stuff. Uh, so we're, we're sure that we have that um, down. All right, so uh, I'm gonna do that. Um, and then after that, I'll probably, I, I wanted to also um, show you guys some actual real data Okay, because I, I went through this growth accounting stuff, um, but it was very abstract, I think, in retrospect. Uh, it's probably good to just see, like, how does all that work out? Like, what is this TF, especially the TFP stuff, like, what does that look like in, in actual data? Um, does it kind of make sense, given what we would expect? Okay, so we're going to do that. And then after that, then I'm going to try and get into this beyond GDP stuff that I was talking about. So hopefully by looking at... That there's just pure GDP stuff. They also give us a little bit of like inspiration to go beyond GDP. Um, maybe we think the numbers aren't capturing what we would otherwise expect. Okay, so sometimes, like ideally, you know, you have numbers and you kind of just you believe what the numbers say. But sometimes you look at the numbers and you're like, I don't believe that. Um, and it turns out maybe that there's something missing from the story. Okay, so it's I'm not saying we should ignore science or numbers, but I'm saying that it's a sort of back and forth process. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's fine. I mean, everything always takes longer than I expect. So we'll see if we get to that third one. Hopefully we at least get through the first two. All right, um, so let's uh, pull up, okay, big change in, in brightness here. Okay, let's pull up the, the homework. Okay, um, so this is, this is due in one week now. So it's not, we still have time. Don't, I don't, I don't, I, I was worried I'd, you guys would, uh, uh, Think that it was due today. It's not due today. It's due in a week. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'll I'll go over part one a, and then we can we can work from there. All right. So then the 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 structure of these problems is basically, you know, you have to do a little bit of work at the beginning just to set everything up and to be able to answer questions about the particular model. In this case, the solar model. Um, and then from there, it's just sort of like doing you know three graphs of what I'm interested in. Okay. So. Um, I mean, for the first one, for instance, I mean, for both of them, I mean, I more or less went through the derivation um, in class, but I want you to show me that you know how to do it, okay, in the homework, all right? So, um, yeah, okay, so, but then essentially what the, the first one is, is just like a static solo model, right? Uh, we got our production function here, okay? Um, let me just look in the chat so if I don't miss anything. Okay, so we got our production function here. Uh, we got our law of motion for capital, all right, and we're saying no population growth, okay, so that L is just fixed, basically, it's not going anywhere, um, and no technological growth, so A is uh, fixed also, it's not going anywhere, at least it's not going anywhere systematically, we're going to show, we're going to have it change, but it's going to be like, you know, going along with L, black play happens, and then a bunch of people die, sadly, and you're at a different L, and you see what happens to the system, okay, so, um, yeah, so that's uh, so. There's no Malthusian action, anything like that. No growth at all. It's just sort of a very static world. Okay, but we can still think about what happens. Okay, so then, um, yeah, so that's the setup. All right, now if, let me um, and then just to, to to preview things. I mean, so the first part A here is gonna is asking you know you have a big drop in L to some natural disaster. Okay, and then what's what happens over time in response to this? Okay, so. Um, yeah, I mean, usually, maybe part A isn't so realistic because you'd, you'd expect you know, there'd be a drop and then maybe a return to, to some initial level of L. We do that in, in the other parts, so, but the part A is just like you're going along and boom, it drops and that's it. Okay, so, um, all right, so let me jump over to the uh, you know, iPad here. All right, so this is question one. Um, I have somehow, oh, there we go. I was in like read-only mode. Okay, now I can actually write things. That's always useful. Okay, so part one, um, this is sort of like general part one and then we'll jump into A, okay? Uh, so part one, um, 
Let me just write down our assumptions. Our assumptions are we have a production function. Okay, and then we have some law of motion for capital. In this case, k dot is s y minus delta k. All right, so all we, the first part, the first thing we want to do is just because this is asking in the, these parts, it's asking about what happens to output per capita y over l. Okay, so what we want to do is make convert the model into one that's in terms of like capital y, capital k, capital l, into one that's in terms of lowercase y or y over l. Okay, so this is like output per capita y over l. We're going to also need to think about capital per worker. Capital per capita sounds funny, so I'm not going to say capital per worker, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to convert it into terms that are just lowercase letters, okay? Um, all right, and so then how do we do that? All right, well, so what we want to do is we want to figure out, I mean, the, the main thing that's moving around is capital, right? And capital relative to uh, the number of workers, okay? So what we want to do, the, the, this, the way I always approach it is, well, if that's what we're interested in, then let's look at the growth rate of that, okay? The, the growth rate of lowercase k, which is capital per worker. So we know because that's capital K over Z. Then we got capital letters and capital, it's very confusing, I'm sorry. Um, so we, we know that lowercase k is capital K uh, over capital L, right? So then the growth rate of, of capital per worker is gonna be the growth rate of capital minus growth rate of the number of workers or labor, okay? Population. Uh, so it's gonna look like that, right? So this just comes from, from K equaling K over L. We get that from our growth rate rules, all right? And then, uh, well, we know, and then the last thing we need to do, or the next thing we need to do is plug in for k dot, right? So that's s um, times y minus delta k up on top. And on the bottom, we got just k. All right. Now, well, okay. And then we get actually the next part, l, l dot over l. We, we are assuming in the background, remember, that l dot over l is zero, right? We, we usually call that... Um, N, right? We're assuming that N, which is the growth rate of, oops, botched it. We're assuming that L over L is zero, and also that A dot over A is zero, because those things aren't moving around at all. Um, so in some sense, our life is easier because that's this second term here on the right is just that's a zero. It's a really flat zero. Okay, it's zero. Okay, so that guy's he's gone. All right. Um, okay, and so then we're left with. Uh, you know, s times y over k, just distributing that k, s times y over k, and then the second term is just delta k over k, which is delta, all right? So, and that's, that's remember, this is our growth rate of little k. Okay, so we plugged in for capital, growth, uh, the law of motion for capital, and noted that um, labor is not going anywhere, all right? So that's that. Now, um, Okay, and then we can also uh, plug in for output. Okay, so we have that y there, all right, but we know that y is just a function of k and l, right, and a. So we can plug in for that too. So let's do that. So that's gonna be s, k to the alpha, a l to the one minus alpha, all right, so s times y, and then we're dividing by k, and then don't forget about delta. All right, so that's just another, using what we know, plugging stuff in. We get that, all right. So now, well, we're 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 taking it one step at a time, all right. But we're we're getting there, all right. We're going to be able to simplify this equation um, in such a way that it only features lowercase variables, which is what we want to bring this down to a per capita model, all right. Um, okay, and essentially, think about dividing that case. We're going to get s. We're going to get k, basically to the alpha minus one. That's the k to the alpha divided by k is k to the alpha minus one and then AL to the one minus alpha, and then minus delta, okay? So here you can see that the, the whole kind of magic of that production function, remember that's the Cobb-Douglas production function, oops, um, where am I here? Up top, this, this, the whole magic of this Cobb-Douglas production function right here is, you know, it's, it's alpha and one minus alpha, which is to say that the, the coefficients on those two things just sum the one by construction on capital and, and AL, all right? So that means when you divide by something, you kind of, you get a good ratio, right? So that you have K at the end here, what we finally got here, you have K to the alpha minus one, 
an AL to one minus alpha. Those are just one minus, or those are just the negatives of one another. Alpha, uh, alpha minus one is the negative of one minus alpha, right? So you can write it like, well, um, well, we can we can bring we want to bring one to the bottom. It can be either be uh, k or it can be al. I'm actually gonna write it like this, sort of k over al to the alpha minus one. Okay, so k to the alpha minus one, and we're keeping that where it is. And then al to the one minus alpha. If we move it to the denominator, then it's one over al to the alpha minus one, right? So the um, in the denominator we, we can negate it, but that means that we can also combine it into one fraction, right? Right. So here, so what we're doing here is just combining these two things because we because their exponents are just the negatives of one another. So we can combine that into a fraction. Okay. All right. I'm just going to keep writing the left hand side. That's the growth rate of k. All right. And so basically. We're almost there. Okay, so now the last step, really, or one second last step, let's say, is noting that well, this is s. Okay, that thing in parentheses. Um, oh, actually, wait. This I did. I I haven't made a mistake, but I have not done this the way I should have. But okay, whatever. Um, that thing in parentheses. Okay, so there's a k over l in there. All right, there's a k over l, so it's Capital K over A, right? So that the K over L part, sorry, lowercase K, the K over L part is the lowercase K, and then there's still that one over A kind of hanging out in there. Okay, um, minus delta. All right. Um, okay. The the other way you can write this is if we sort of undistribute things, we're going to get K to the alpha minus one, A to the one minus alpha minus delta. Okay, so so now okay. So just in terms of what have we accomplished, we plugged in a bunch of stuff. We plugged in the k dot. We plugged in the production function, and we kind of made it so that everything is in terms of lowercase k, right? Which is like, so we started with capital A. We want to make everything in terms of lowercase k. Capital A is gonna. We're just gonna let that one be as is. Okay, that's not really something you normalize. That's just like a technological level. Okay, so we're just going to keep that where it is for now. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. In this, like, from from this step, basically. So, so this one, so basically here in this step, right, we're using that you know little case. Perhaps this is just because the the lowercase uppercase k thing. So we're using the fact that little k is capital K over um, capital L. Right? So this is capital K over capital L. We're just turning that into little k. So we're just taking that part, and then there's the one over a left over. Yeah. So I, I mean, it, yeah. Sorry, it's confusing because the capital K and lowercase k don't always look that different. I just try to make it so that they cross, like the left one. It kind of crosses in a weird way, and then the capital doesn't. Okay. So um. All right. So so now we have it in terms of lowercase letters. The the last thing I'll do is just multiply this k back over to the other side. So that it's just like a k dot equals something. All right, so then we're going to get s. So this is going to be k to the alpha minus 1 times k, which is just k to the alpha, a to the 1 minus alpha minus delta. OK, so that seems like more work than it should be, but it is what it is. All right. Um, and so that now is our, our per cap. Sorry. That last k right is our per capita uh, law of motion, right? So this is this from this we can say okay we start somewhere some per capita value per capital capital per worker, and we can say how it evolves over time. Okay. Um, all right. So that so that's that's so this is I mean so this is good you know for part one. So now we can. Kind of, we sort of know what's happening in per capita land, and so we can start thinking about okay, well, what happens if we're going along and, and a changes, or if k itself changes, or something like that, or l, right? So, um, so this is sort of like the setup, and now we can just sort of use this to answer all these questions, okay? And then, so this is for part one. For part two, um, where we have, yeah. So for part two, we have. Uh, 
also growth in A, so you're, you're probably going to want to normalize by that too. Okay, um, but it's going to be a similar process where you, instead of dividing by L, you divide by AL and nor normalize it like that. Okay, so, okay, so now, um, so this is sort of where we wanted to get. Uh, from this, okay, there's probably one more thing. Okay, because in part A, um, in, the, in the homework, it says, assuming we are initially in steady state. Okay, so we want to say we're initially in steady state and then something happens. Okay, so from, from this one, if we want to think about steady state. Okay, so the equation on the right will tell us, you know, if we start at some initial value for k0, okay, this is going to tell us, okay, where are we going? All right. We're going to converge, we're going to move around and we're going to converge to some point, which is steady state, and I'm going to call that k star. So over time, we're going to converge to k star. This equation here, though, will tell us precisely how we do that, right? It'll give us that graph, okay? Um, and so then the question is, what is that steady state, okay? And so that's the steady state is just going to be where k dot is equal to zero, okay, right? So this, um, you know, or if you want to think about it graphically, I mean, it's often good to think about these things graphically, right? So, um, you know, this, uh, if you plot this k dot, right, as a function of k, well, let's think about what this this function, like this, you know, we're plotting this this function right here. What What's this k dot as a function of k going to look like? Okay. Well, at zero, we're not producing anything. We're not investing anything. We don't have any depreciation because there's nothing to depreciate. There's no capital. So we actually just produce nothing. And and we also don't go anywhere. We just stay at zero. Okay, so that's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Um, oops. And uh, then what happens after that? Well, the question is, are, you know, are we gonna go up? Are we gonna go down? Are we gonna go up and then down? All right. Um, and it turns out you're gonna go up first. Okay, because this is like, you know, it's, it's a battle between two forces. This is investment, right? The first term, and this is depreciation here. Second term, it's the, the, it's the net effect of those two things. Now, the, the investment term is, it's going to go up quite steeply. This is, this is because of uh, decreasing marginal returns, right? So if you start from zero and you, that initial, that first unit of capital is going to be the most productive unit of capital you could ever imagine because it's just doing the most critical things, right? You're going from zero capital, you're going to do the most important tasks first, right? Um, so that's going to, so, and then it's going to get less and less um, productive marginally uh, as you go on and on in terms of an average productivity too. Um, okay, so it's going to, it's going to go up very steeply at first and then kind of level out. It's not going to go negative, but it's going to level out. Um, Okay, and, and the other way you can think about it is this is just in terms of the, the algebra. I mean, it's k to the alpha. Alpha is some number between 0 and 1. So it's going to look like a square root function. All right, it's going to go look, look, and the square root function starts sort of infinitely steeply and then levels out, right? So that's that's the kind of function we're going to deal with. Against a linear function, linear functions are pretty good, but the, the, the square root type function is going to be steeper. So initially, it's going to go up, okay, like that. Um, so you start at zero, initially go up. The thing though is that because of decreasing returns, that in, that investment component is going to get less marginally less effective over time, uh, with decreasing returns to uh, decreasing marginal product basically. Okay, whereas the depreciation just keeps going linearly. Okay, so so actually eventually the depreciation wins. Oops. Um, eventually the depreciation wins. I should not be erasing things. I want to draw things. Uh, and you go like this. All right, so it's going to look something like that, and there's going to be some intersection point over here. And if you if you keep following this, I mean, it's just going to go off to negative, wherever places we don't want to go. All right, so um, that's what your 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 equation is going to look like. Okay, and so from from this, you, it's it's kind of like what we you know what we did with Malthus, right? Okay, so this is and this point, this intersection, is like k star. All right, so this the zero point I'm going to ignore because. Um, it's not very interesting to just have no capital and never produce anything. And also I'll argue in a second that it's not going to be stable either. All right. So 
Okay, so that's that's what this is gonna look like. This this is true for any type of SOA model that I throw at you. It's it's pretty much gonna look like this. All right. Um, and if you think about, you know, I said there was some k zero. Let's say you start at some value k zero. Okay, it doesn't have to be. I drew it so it's almost exactly at the peak here, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be. It can be anywhere, right? So let's say you start there. Okay, and then the way it's the same as we did with Malthus. You, you start there and you say, okay, well, where am I going? You go there and then you reevaluate. Okay, where am I? Where am I going? And you keep doing that until you end up somewhere interesting, or just somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna start here, and you can see, you know, so you know, any anything above the axis is k dot positive, right? This is k dot positive land here, and this is k dot negative land here. So above the axis, you're gonna move up. So we're gonna move along here. Okay, and then you move a little bit and say, okay, well, we're still above the axis. Keep moving right up. Right, you keep doing that, and eventually you're going to hit the axis. And at that point, you're going to say, "Well, I'm on the axis. K dot is zero, so I'm just going to stay here." That's what the the equation says. Right. So uh, similar to Malthus, and then you could also imagine, okay, well, maybe we start with like a really high level of capital. Then it's sort of the opposite. Okay, well now I'm negative. I'm going to deplete my capital stock by sort of underinvesting, and then eventually I'll also end up at this steady state. Okay. Right, and actually, anywhere you start that's positive, this is going to be true, right? So it doesn't. Remember, it doesn't matter that like how, like even if we're to the left of that that k zero that I drew, it's still a positive number. We're still above the axis. Okay, so we're actually going to move up, right? So the fact that we're moving vertically up on this graph doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's above the axis, we're going to move right. Okay, so anything positive k is going to move to this k star. So the only thing that will uh, Back up there is k exactly equal to zero. Just sort of like this is things are infinitely bad here because we don't have any capital. But if I gave you even one little machine, you could you know use that, make other machines, and eventually you invest your way up to uh, that high, that positive k star. Okay, so that's why that zero point is kind of unstable, whereas the k star point, the positive point, is quite stable. All right, so. Um, Okay, so that's that's sort of the logic. Okay, we're gonna there's gonna be some k star, and we're gonna end up there because we sort of had to, right? It's very stable. Um, and the last thing we can do is is maybe we want to find exactly what does that k star look like. Well, uh, you know, over here, start going back over to the left side, right? That's gonna we're gonna solve this equation for when k dot equals zero. So, it, you know, graphically, it's just the intersection here with zero. Uh, algebraically, it's just you're solving an equation. When does this thing equal zero? Okay, and ignore um, the zero. The one answer is zero, but we're gonna. That's not interesting, so we're gonna ignore that. Okay. So, um, all right. So when k dot equals zero, well, that means that you know, um, you know zero is equal to s k to the alpha a to this one minus alpha uh, minus delta k. All right, so that's our equation. We want to solve that. Um, in general, these equations, or any, you know, any given equation like this, nonlinear, can be difficult to solve. This one's not so bad. Okay, I'll show you. So then, just move that to the other side. So we're going to get, you know, the investment term, right? Okay, uh, s k the alpha, a to the alpha minus one minus alpha is equal to the depreciation term, which is delta k. All right, I'm going to have to like skirt around my head here to uh, finish this derivation, but it's not that long, so I, I think I have enough room, okay? Um, so let's kind of like cross multiply here. All right, so if you move, we want, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna see, I'm gonna get something like k raised to some power is equal to something, okay? So you know, on the left, we have k to the alpha. On the right, we have a k. So let's move that k to the alpha over to the right side. Okay, so now we're gonna get s a to the one minus alpha is equal to, let me just like, you know, I'm gonna reappropriate that space. Okay, so uh, s. What's an s? This should be an s. S a to the one minus alpha delta, and here we have k, which is gonna be to the one minus alpha. Okay, so we're moving that k to the alpha up here. I can actually point at stuff when I'm close enough over to the right hand side. Okay. Um, all right. 
And then if we solve for that k to the one minus alpha, that's going to be s a to the one minus alpha over delta. Okay, and then all we have to do, I'm just going to pop over here, is invert that to get k star. So, so we have k to the one minus alpha equals something, which is in this case, well, I can't point it anymore, s a to the one minus alpha over delta. Okay, and if you just invert that by taking it to the one over one minus alpha, you're going to get k star is equal to, essentially it's going to be s over delta one over one minus alpha times a. Okay, so this is our steady state value. Okay, so so to get to this last step, okay, right, we're, we're taking kind of taking both sides to the one over one minus alpha. So on the left side, you just get k, which I'm going to, I'll write k star because it's that, that steady state. The right side, you're going to get s over delta, we're just there, and the, but then they get a one over one minus alpha. The a was already to the one minus alpha, so it just sort of cancels and we just get a linear a. Okay, so you can see, you know, the 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 net result is that the steady state is it's the balance between investment s and depreciation delta, right? That's so that's why we have that ratio there. Okay, um, the exponent one over one minus alpha is sort of just, I mean, the, the sort of the, the more important capital is the more uh, extreme these fluctuations are going to be. And then A is just saying, well, if you have better technology, clearly you can produce more and you can invest more, and so you're going to have more capital as a result. Okay, so that's that's um, that's our steady state. Okay, so now this is sort of the full derivation. Right? We we have we started with an aggregate model, we converted it to a per capita model, and got that k dot equation, which tells us precisely how things move around. We can plot it and see that there's only one stable steady state. Okay, and then we can even solve for that steady state and see see what it is. Okay, all right. So now now we're really in a position where we can we can answer almost any question about this model, in particular, A, B, and C in this particular problem. Okay, so um, that's good. All right, so let's um, let's do that. Okay, well I'll, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'll do I'll do part A for you, and then and then we can. Well, then you guys you guys are are going to handle the rest okay so um all right so this is like 1a so let's let's let me just write out what we found from the previous page um what was it k alpha this is that k dot equation we had and then also k star was this okay so those are the two things we found at this point. Okay, so then um, 1A. 1A says, uh, okay, so suppose there's a large drop in population due to a natural disaster, such as a plague. Um, and actually, I wrote this problem like a couple of years ago. Then there actually was a real plague, unfortunately. Not a plague, I mean, not black plague level, but you know. So this isn't, this isn't like a COVID. Part A is not a COVID question, because like L, like a lot of people died clearly, but like as a fraction of the total population, it's not like the Black Plague, right? So this is more of a Black Plague type question, okay? Um, so uh, assume we are initially in steady state, uh, plot the time path of income per capita, whatever. So there's, so there's a big drop in L, we're initially in steady state, what happens, okay? Um, all right, so then initially in steady state, that means we're at K star, okay, which is given by this thing here. Now here, this is interesting because None of these parameters are changing, right? There's no L in, in these two equations, right? Uh, but what is changing is, remember, the, the way that L is going to show up here is that, remember, K is still equal to capital K over capital L, right? So if I come to you and say, here's here are the, the initial conditions for this model, is that there's, you know, a certain amount of capital, total capital, you know, capital K, uh, I don't know, it, it, the units are somewhat indeterminate. Maybe it's, you know, a thousand factories or something like that, okay? Um, and there's a total amount of labor, L, that the units there are clear, this is, you know, say 100 million people, right? So um, that's, that's what you get for the initial condition, right? Which we could, we could call, so this is like initial 
sorry, handwriting bad. Okay, initial condition. Uh, you're gonna get, you know, like K, I'll just call it K0. You're gonna get like K0 and L0. Okay, and, and actually L is, L0, you're just gonna get L, L, L is constant here, right? So, let me just like L. Okay, so L is constant, there's L, but K is moving around. So you're, I'm gonna tell you, here's the initial amount of capital, and then you can say, how does it evolve, okay? Um, so, uh, and this, well, this isn't true just initially, but at any point, right? And so then what you do then is say, okay, well then the lowercase k zero is just whatever, you know, take that initial capital level divided by population and that, that's, that's your initial capital per worker, okay? So uh, what I'm saying here is like, you know, if, you know, in the real world, and if this is describing the real world, you get capital K, capital L, and then you calculate lowercase k, right? Um, Okay, so then, so so now let's let's start plotting this and see if, if we can make some sense of it, right? So on the x-axis, we're gonna have time. Okay, here we're gonna have lowercase y, which is y over L, right? Output per capita, all right? So then um, initially we said that, okay, so k star is gonna go down. So just, you know, we should probably draw k star up on the higher end. Or, or yeah, k, k star is gonna go down. So then, um, well, actually, wait, no. What am I thinking? It's gonna go up a little bit. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Let's draw it down here. Okay, so whatever it is, we'll figure it out. Um, we're going along at K star. Okay, so that's that's the first part. We know that we were in steady state and we're just happy there. Nothing, no bad plagues have happened yet, but they're going to. Um, okay, and then the, let's draw the point where the plague happens, like, I don't know, I didn't say that what, what the name of it is, let's just call it T0. This is where the plague, black death, whatever happens, okay? And so you get a big drop, you get a big drop in L, right? Okay, so now this is where that weird Malthusian logic kicks in, right? Though we don't have, you know, in Malthus, remember we had L dot equal L equaling some function of per capita output and things like that. We don't have that here, but we still do have a little, just because of the way our production function looks, we have a little bit of Malthusian logic embedded in there in the sense that if there's fewer people, there's more capital per person, and so output per worker is going to be higher. Okay, so in question, in parts B and C, we kind of say, well, implicitly we're kind of saying, well, maybe that's not so realistic, okay, but but in part A, that's really what happens in the, in the model, okay. So we were in steady state. Okay, and remember, so remember, steady state means k, that this k here is in steady state. So that ratio of capital to, to workers or the population is constant. So that means that like, there's, an initial, there's a population that was, you know, it was originally like 100 million, okay? And we sort of built up enough capital to get that ratio to the right spot so that you have like the right number of machines per worker or workers per machine, right? That's that's what the solo model does is it gets you up to that that like op, not optimal but like whatever the outcome the ratio is, okay, and um, so that's where we were going at and then we get this big drop in L, okay. So if L goes down though, basically from this equation that means K goes up because right, it's in the denominator. So L went way down. Okay, sorry. Actually, we're not plotting K. I should I should say we're plotting Y star here. I'll, I'll clarify that in a second. But for now we can think about K. So L goes down. Okay, and so that means that K goes up. All right, so you get you have more capital per worker. Okay, now the question is, how does that translate into output per worker? Okay, um, did I, let me just, did I? Oh, I didn't actually derive that. Okay, there's a relatively simple answer for that, which I'm gonna show you now, okay? Um, which we've, we've kind of seen this before. This is, this is what we looked at in Malthus, okay? So remember, a little y is capital Y over L, okay? Which is um, k to the alpha AL to the one minus alpha over L, right? So it's probably, that's from the previous page we had that, that's the definition of Y, our production function, okay? Um, all right, and so then here, I guess we could just factor out all the terms. So we're gonna have a k to the alpha, we're gonna have an a to the one minus alpha, and then we're gonna have an L 
to the minus alpha. Okay, because that L, you have an L to the one minus alpha divided by L, you get L to the minus alpha. And remember, this is Y, okay? Um, and then we can combine those, right, into like K over L raised to the alpha times A to the one minus alpha. Okay, just combining those exponents K to the alpha and then the L to the minus alpha, all right? And then the last thing is noting that this thing here, so this is capital, I'm getting a little slap here, but this is a capital, 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 capital K, all right, um, to the alpha. So that means this is like a lowercase, that K over L, the alpha, A to the one minus alpha, all right? Okay, we kind of implicitly did that when we derived the K dot equation, but I didn't, I forgot to mention it, okay? So this is, um, this is saying, okay, given a certain k star, it's cool that we know k star, but we really care about, we don't really care about k intrinsically, we care about the output that it produces, right? So that's why we care about y star. Okay, so this, this is true at any point, okay, that y is equal to k to the alpha, a to the one minus alpha, and what it means is that, well, more capital means more output and on a per worker basis, and more better technology means more output, both, both of which make perfect sense, right? So... Um, and it's also, you know, this also means that once, if we know K star in particular, then that's going to imply, you know, Y star is K star to the alpha times A to the one minus alpha. Okay. All right. So that, that was, okay. So this is somewhat of a side, but it's important that we, we needed to prove that to kind of get some traction here. Okay. So now let's think back to this logic of the big shock, the plague, right? So L goes down here, just starting back up here again. Um, over here. Okay, so L goes down. That's the big shock. I don't know. The black plague was 50% of the population, right? So then that means that little k is going to go up by 50%. Okay? Um, it's merely because you have more, like, you have, the, you have the capital sitting around and you just have more per worker. Okay? Um, so that's going to go up. Okay? And that also means that Y, because of that equation down here that we just derived, K goes up, then that means that Y goes up as well. Right, this is a positive function here. Okay, so then y is going to go up. Long story short. All right, then we're going to end up somewhere up here. Okay, so then um, now, so so let's say L went down by fifty percent. That means that k is little k is going to double, right? So you have the the denominator. That means that the the ratio is going to double. Okay. Um, now, what, what, what exactly happens to y? Okay, well, here, you know, k doubles, then it's going to go up by, you know, a factor of 2 raised to that alpha, right? So it's not, y output isn't going to double, okay? And again, that's that's because of decreasing returns. When you double the inputs, you, you don't double the outputs, but you multiply them by like 1.5 or something, okay? So it'll go up by a factor of 2 to the alpha, right? So that alpha is a half, it'll go up by a factor of root 2, which is 1.4 one, I think, something like that. Okay, so it'll go up some amount, right? Um, okay, th that's that's this new point up here, okay? All right, so then, um, now what happens after that? That's the question, okay? Like, so usually with these kind of things, you know, you, you say, well, where do we start? We started in steady state. We were going along just fine. Um, there's a shock. Then you need to figure out like, what happens initially. Okay, and we've done that. There's a big jump up to this new level uh, call it Y1 or something like that. Okay, so up to some new level, okay? And now you're gonna figure out both where are you gonna go and where do you end up, okay? Usually, if you figure out where you end up, where you go is just some reasonable path between those two points, okay? Um, you know, we could, yeah, that's good enough. I mean, these types of models, you don't, you know, if you're going A to B, you just go in the direction of B if you're studying A, right? So um, where are we going to end up is a good question. And the answer basically is that, you know, look at this K-star equation up here, okay? K-star equation does not contain L at all, right? It only has S, delta, alpha, and A, none of which have changed, okay? So the, the, the steady state logic has not changed in any way. And so we should end up exactly where we started. So, so K-star should end up exactly where it started. And hence, y star should also end up exactly where it started. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this. So, so we should end up back on this dotted line. Okay. Um, now, what's the precise path? 
we take to get there, and it turns out it's gonna look kind of like an exponential decay like this, okay? So we'll sort of asymptote to y star again, okay? Um, you can calculate precisely what that looks like. Essentially, if you, if you, um, when you evaluate this thing here at k star, it's gonna be zero by definition. k dot is zero when you evaluate this at k star, okay? If, if you lower k, right, I guess we can look over to this graph here, you know, if you were initially at k star, okay, if you lower k, k dot's gonna be, you know, fairly positive for a while, and then it's gonna get, you know, that it's gonna be less positive over time, right? So what that means is that your slope is steepest right away, and then it gets shallower and shallower as you asymptote, right? So that's that's kind of usually what happens is that you have you have this jump, you have initially a rapid movement, and then you kind of asymptote, and you, you get a much more shallower transition, okay? Um, Okay, so that's that's pretty much it, right? So the, the, the salient points are if you start in steady state, you end up back where you started. There's a jump up, right? As, as long as you get start in steady state, jump up, end up back where you started in a fairly orderly transition, then that's perfect, right? So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for for this kind of thing. Okay, so there's you know there's a good amount of work to derive the equations to say, okay, here's what happens. But once you have those, then you can kind of go through and just apply them. All right, and so the and then the what parts B and C are doing is basically like implicitly it's sort of saying okay well the the, the only it's it's unreasonable to say that the effect of a plague would only be the drop in population. There's a climate it's a climate it's a fair you know uh, disruptions in production, basically a lowering of productivity. Okay, and so that's what we're looking at. B and C are much more analogous to COVID, where the the death toll, while large and tragic, is not like a substantial, substantial fraction of the population like the Black Plague, but there are large uh, reductions in productivity and output associated, not just from lockdowns explicitly, but you know, even if there were no lockdowns, right, people would be, uh, they would get sick, they have to take off work, they would avoid working perhaps, they would decide, you know, working from home may be less productive than in person and so on. So there, there are major, you know, Productivity disruptions, um, even in the absence of lockdowns, and then and you add on lockdowns, and maybe there there are more. So okay, so um, that's that's the basic idea that you, we're going to look at the for, for B and C. You're going to look at these these little drops in productivity. Okay. Um, okay, so that's that's the basic idea. That, that's how I. Th I mean, that, that's um, very. Uh, you don't have to do exactly that, but that's you know that's how I would approach these these types of problems. Okay, um, and uh, yeah. All right. So, any questions on that before we uh, move on to to other stuff? Okay. All right. So, let's move on to other stuff. Um, okay. So I want yeah I want to show you some data. All right. Um, before, before you know, after we we after we've done the growth accounting stuff, uh, before we go to beyond GDP, let's I, I do want to look at some data and see sort of what's out there. Okay, so I'm gonna um, how should I do this? So the main I'll, I'll, I'm gonna show you sort of the raw data, and then I, I'm I'm gonna do it in Python and in like a notebook format, just because it's it, I can rapidly go through you different show you different plots. Okay. Um, We'll go more into detail about how to 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 do this data analysis stuff later on, okay? Um, but for now, I'll just kind of show it to you. You don't have to worry about the the intricate details of everything, okay? Um, all right. So the the main, you know, so what, what we're looking at here with this, you know, sort of GDP growth accounting stuff is, you know, we're looking at countries in these solo style terms. So we're saying like, you know, what's the output? Uh, what's the level of capital? Population, human capital, and things like that, and so how do those factors lead to basically output? Okay, and you and we're largely going to be looking at stuff in normalized terms, so per capita. Okay, so um, yeah, and so the main data there's many data sources for this kind of stuff, but the main data source is this thing called the Penn World Tables. So it used to be, I guess it, it started at Penn, um, like the University of Pennsylvania. I think it moved. So for some reason, I moved to University of Groningen in the Netherlands, I think, or Denmark, one of those two. Um, 
I'm not sure why, but anyway, they still call it the pen world tables. Okay, so um, that's the main source. Okay, and so what that basically has is, you know, it's a it's a panel. Okay, so it's a panel in the sense of it has a time dimension and a country dimension. Okay, that's the usual notion of a panel is time plus some unit like a country or a state. Um, and then it has a bunch of different variables for each of those, you know, points in the matrix. So, you know, it has GDP, you know, GDP, capital, human capital, uh, different ways to measure those and, and so on. Okay. So let's, uh, let me go to this. So if, if you, you can down, so if you just search for pen world tables, actually I linked to it on the website too. You can, there's a, there's a download, you can download the, basically it's just a big Excel file. Um, or a Stata file if you're Stata conversant. Um, so let's see. So this is um, where you at Excel. Okay, so here this this is what it'll look like. This is actually Open Office. It's not Excel, but you know, similar thing. Um, so uh, it's just a big old spreadsheet. Okay, um, and you know Aruba happens to be alphabetically the first country. And you can see basically each row is uh, you know a country and a time, and it'll tell you a bunch of different stuff. So this is like GDP. You can see employment, population. There's all those little acronyms are defined in the, this in the legend tab. Okay, but this is the data tab. Now you can see first of all, Aruba doesn't have any data from 50 to 69 because I don't know. I guess they weren't measuring or something. But once 70 kicks in, it has all these numbers, and then you can look at you know. You know some hundred numbers of different countries, one of which is the U.S. and so on. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, it has pretty good data coverage, and and, and you can you know for the for the project stuff later on, you're probably be looking at some of this. Okay, when you're thinking about different countries. Okay, and you and you can more or less do compute stuff in Excel, right? So if you're just interested in one country, just copy it and and you know calculate per capita stuff, divide whatever you want to do. Okay, and we can go over that. Um, a bit later, all right? But that's that's the sort of the raw data source, okay? Um, now, uh, you know, the, well, so let me, let, me, let me jump into looking at this stuff. So first of all, I need to switch windows. Uh, give me a second here. Jupyter Lab, here we go. So this is kind of oblong. Let me, um, there we go, okay, so this, I'm just gonna like artificially move this over past them. Okay, so it's probably a little small. I think I can increase the size here. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. All right, so let's move that back. All right. Can you guys see this roughly, or at least the, the graph components? You Can you see that pretty well? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so this. Um, yeah, so don't worry about this stuff. I'm just going like importing libraries, setting up, telling it to look nice. Um, so basically what we're doing here is going to load in this data. Okay, so just like loading in that whole Excel file. Okay, and we'll go over what, you know, what all this means um, probably in like a week or two, all right? Uh, but for now, just we're just going to look at the, the, the output basically. Okay, so, um, you know, so all I want to do here is just show you kind of a, a sample of countries. I tried to be... Well, par partially I was influenced by the countries that they were talking about in why nations fail, but I also wanted to get like some notion of, of geographic coverage, plus like a little bit of large country bias. Okay, so I'm, I got the U.S., China, France. That's going to be Europe, uh, Korea, because they have a sort of unique growth history. Botswana, and also we talked. They were talked about in um, why nations fail. Botswana was was sort of one of the. the uh, interesting countries, more interesting countries in why nations fail, and then Colombia, because they, you know, they talked about all the stuff with uh, FARC and, and the rebels and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, obviously, there's only so many lines that can fit on here, and there are a ton of countries, so um, I'm going to have to leave some out. All right, so, but we, what we want to look at is just first, let's look at the main indicator, GDP, or GDP per capita. Even here, there there is, um, e even if you can settle on a, a, a proper way to measure GDP, even, even that we argue about a lot. Um, but if you settle on a no notion of GDP, there's a question of what do you divide by? Because um, you can divide by population, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, but it is true that, you know, only a certain amount of people work, right? Sometimes it's just that they're not 
old enough or they're retired or they can't find work or whatever. There's a bunch of different reasons, but you know, the, you can think about the notion of the employment to population ratio. That's something that varies a lot across different countries. So it's not clear whether you should do population, which tells you the output per person in that country uh, or per worker, which would tell you something a little bit more like an average productivity notion, right? And, and the worry is that, you know, if you have a country where it's like an older country, a lot of people are retired, their GDP per population may not look so good, but that doesn't mean that they're not doing well or they're not productive. It's just a lot of people are retired or, or too young or something like that. So um, I'm going to do population, but just keep that in mind. So if, if you look at Japan, for instance, they, they get kind of penalized in some sense for having a fairly large retiree population because they're a pretty old country on average. Okay, so... Um, old in the like the age of the people in the country right so okay so this i mean it's going to be the same thing um so this is a plot basically if you do gdp per capita per per person in that country regardless of employment status um okay so you can see i mean u.s does pretty well in gdp per capita we're, we're, we're kind of good at that um and uh some country the, the u.s often is sort of the extreme case but um you know i think luxembourg does have higher GDP per capita than the U.S. and those are small number of countries that, that are higher. Okay, so but oftentimes the U.S. is going to be the highest, um, and then you can see some other countries like France. So you can see France is like you know uh, they're generally they um, have like so you can see here the well we'll see the relative numbers in a minute. Maybe maybe I'll wait for that. So so France you know in terms of just the growth I mean they've had pretty good growth below the U.S. and then they have sort of a slowdown. Okay. And you can see the U.S. Um, this is two thousand. Uh, this is two thousand eight recession here. That's that was pretty big, right? Um, we don't have the Great Depression because this only goes back to nineteen fifty. Great Depression was like way bigger, uh, and then like things rebounded with World War Two because we were just like making airplanes, I guess, and then they sort of stabilized. So this is like after that whole thing. So you have just like a long period of growth in GDP per capita. I would say. Kind of the late 70s, there was a little bit of stagnation here. 2000 recession, 2008 recession, though, seems to be one of the, the major events of this, this era, right? So, um, and then if you look at France, it's more like they didn't recover as, as well in terms of GDP per capita, right? Um, if you look at Korea, they just had very consistent high growth since basically the early 80s, okay? Um, yeah, it's and consistent with the, the story uh this um event here late 90s is the so-called asian financial crisis there's this uh currency i think it started with something with the thai bot but there's a major kind of financial crisis throughout much of southeast and east asia um so that was a pretty big thing um but other than that it's been pretty steady uh and also it was so surprising to me um I mean, the growth has been so fast relative to France that they've almost exceeded France in terms of GDP per capita. Okay. Um, Botswana, we heard a lot about them. Um, this graph is a little misleading in certain ways because, every, you know, Botswana, China, and Colombia are all very compressed. Okay. So they're, they're compressed down there. So it makes it look like it's not good growth. But if you, if you did, looked at, like, the percentage change from their initial value, that's going to be much higher okay so i guess um do i do that later i thought i did that but i may not have uh actually i think i can do that um divide. i'm just going to divide it by the um i don't know uh the value in like 1965 that there's a bunch of numbers. Let me actually plot it. Okay, so this is like, if you divide it by, you say, okay, well, look at the value in 1965, and then for future values, divide it by that. So you're saying, what kind of, what's the, the relative growth since 1965, okay? And here you see a, a different story. These countries that are all sort of compressed visually on the bottom, they may not look as impressive, but then if you look at in ratio to where they were in 65, it's exactly the reverse, right? And so the idea, I mean, the basic idea though is that, you know, um, uh, you know, the countries like the US, there's been steady growth, right? But um, the starting point was a little higher, 
right? Whereas, whereas countries, countries like Korea and China, starting point was lower and they've had like really amazing growth. Uh, that doesn't mean they've fully caught up to the US and, and for instance, uh, France, although Korea is getting there. Uh, but if you look at that, these, these relative numbers, I mean, it's like a 10 to one for China, 15 to one for Botswana, 20 to one for Korea. So these are huge relative gains, okay? Uh, but, but the absolute numbers haven't, haven't yet converged, okay? So that's, that's the basic story there is that even the countries that have had really, really good relative gains, they have a lot of distance to cover, okay? And so that's still an ongoing process, okay? Um, and I guess you can see, yeah, I mean, in the case of Botswana and China, there's a little bit of leveling off maybe, you know? I don't know, maybe, there's a little bit of leveling off in China. It's not clear if that's gonna be a permanent thing, but you know, sort of the last five years or so, okay? But that's, these, these things are hard to say how long, if, if they'll change or not, okay? All right, so that's those are sort of the um, the raw numbers in some sense, or the relative numbers here. Okay, the other thing you can do is look at things relative uh, to a baseline country. So usually, often people use the USA. Okay, so you can say, okay, at, at a given year, you know, look at Korea or look at France and look at their GDP per capita just relative to the U.S. Okay, so for the U.S., by definition, it's just a one straight across because the U.S. divided by the U.S. is one. Um, whereas these other countries, you can see how well they're doing relative to the U.S. Now, that so that but what that means is that if they're staying flat and the U.S. is growing, they're still growing in absolute terms. It's just like relative to the U.S. They're in a similar position. Okay, so you can see like France here, basically catching up to the U.S. coming out of World War II, sort of a big disaster for them. Um, you get up to about 80%, maybe a little more, okay? And then a little bit back down, I guess they're more around probably like 70% now, okay? Which that was it's a little surprising, um, but that's that's where they are. And then you can see Korea just sort of like going from about 10% up to, you know, almost 60, 70%, okay? And then if you look at, you know, Botswana, you know, they were they were down at like 5, five 10% and they're up at like 20 Um China, China, you know, most of that catching up growth seems to have happened after 1990, okay, which is, which is I think, consistent um, with, with the historical narrative, okay, and then they're up around, I think that's probably around 20, okay? Um, and so this is where also, you know, I kind of want you to start thinking about the, um, this beyond GDP notion, okay, because, you know, the question is, uh, for any of these countries, okay, I mean, is, is GDP the, it's a very important metric, okay, but how much are we missing by only looking at GDP, I guess I would say, all right? Um, so some of the big, you know, like I mentioned a couple of classes ago, you know, we're gonna we're gonna put, when we do be on GDP, we're gonna add in new factors that may, just, that may be relevant for welfare of people in those countries, in these countries. Um, so one is leisure, okay, so maybe, um, you think that, uh, you know, in France, maybe they, they have better vacation policies or something like that. They take more leisure time. Um, and that would partially counteract some of this difference here. Okay. You know, they just, they work less and produce, they, sorry, they work, work less, take more leisure, produce a little bit less. But in terms of welfare, maybe it's similar. Okay. Um, if you look at Korea, they um, have had very, very high levels of working hours. Okay. We have a yeah, the, the number of working hours is actually in this data, seeing what, what's the average work week for a, um, a person in these countries. Uh, like Korea was insanely high, basically, at, in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. It's gone down a lot. Um, so so that might be another factor. Um, and then uh, I think it's a China fairly high compared to the U.S. in terms of working hours. So you can see these, these are all going to be additional factors that go into welfare. Okay. And then those other two we looked at were health. Okay. Which... Um, you know, looking at USA versus, uh, say, other Western European countries, we, we have a lower life expectancy, not much, much lower, but it is lower, okay? Uh, but, but the big numbers for health come out of comparing US and Western European countries uh, to, say, countries in Sub-Saharan Africa that have been hit really hard by disease, okay? Um, and, and so they're going to have lower life expectancy, okay? Um, and then on top of that, there's also inequality, okay? So inequality will depending on the country, we'll change these a little bit too. So, so you can think about this as a baseline. We're going to be adding stuff into it to, to hopefully make it a more realistic picture. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I guess the other thing is there's, there's the question of like, 
you know, um, should we think about this as like a linear notion in the sense of like, if GDP is 50% lower, does that mean people are sort of literally 50% worse off? Um, it's not, it's not clear that that's the case if only because of, uh, decreasing marginal utility. Okay. So, so it's not clear that, that I don't have an answer for that question of like, how do we, how do we interpret these absolute numbers in a, in a more intuitive sense? Um, but it, it's not clear that it's exactly a linear thing. Okay. It could be, uh, different from that, it, 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 but, but in some sense, that's a philosophical question too. So it's, it's not clear we're, we're going to get a definitive answer on that. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Okay, so then um, I do some other stuff here. So, so I guess I'm almost out of time, but you, you can also do things like TFP. I remember we talked about TFP where you say, you look at the growth, you try and subtract out the effects of increases in capital and the effects of increases in labor and human capital. And you just look at that sort of productivity uh, growth. Okay, um, so you can do that. I mean, basically you, 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 know, you take output and you kind of divide out these, these influences from investment in, in physical capital, investment in human capital, and you're left with sort of this this residual. Okay, so what I um, what am I doing here? So th this these numbers, I tried to you need to kind of normalize it too, because you if you just get a raw TIP number, there's no real units. Okay, so what I'm doing is normalizing by the U.S. basically today or in 2018 in this case. Okay. Um, for any for the U.S. and any country, so you can see for the, basically the U.S. today is is by definition one. They're the normalizing factor. So then you can see how much has the U.S. grown. You can see where are these other countries in terms of TFP and how they changed uh, over time. Okay, so you can see um, the U.S. has had pretty steady TFP growth. It's just the, sort of the '70s, '65 to '80 was just sort of a flat period, a stagnant period, and then you know 2008 a little bit of a bump there, not as much as in GDP though, um, because in GDP, you know, unemployment comes out of GDP because people aren't working, but it doesn't necessarily affect TFP, the, how productive people are work, when they're working, right? Um, France, not too much happening since like 70, all right? So the productivity is, according to this measure, not so great. Uh, I feel like China, I mean, basically since 90 and especially since 2000, Basically, 2000 was, a, a for, according to TFP, a very big era, 2000 to 2010, for, for, for growth there. And there hasn't been that much TFP growth, according to this, in the, in the 2010s, okay? And then if you look at Botswana, so this is, again, where you get that compression. This is like a visual, sort of a question of graphic presentation. I, I think if you were to scale that up and look at it in relative terms, it would look a lot more substantial, but it seems like there was some increase until 1990 and then maybe a, a stagnancy and then Columbia basically hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. So, all right. So that's, oh, that's what I do here. Okay. You can see Botswana, actually, those are big numbers. It's just compressed visually. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll jump back into this next time because I'm out of time for today. All right. So, so that's it for today. Um, we're going to, we're going to do beyond GDP for real next time. Okay. Um, on, on Tuesday. All right. So yeah, thanks. And I'll, uh, I'll see you then.